Welcome to our next unit on um, integration in the second semester. What we're going to be doing in this unit is we're going to be expanding what we did in our first part on integrals and we're going to first of all look at finding the area between two different graphs and then we're going to take that area and we're going to spin it around different axes and we're going to create some solid shapes and we're going to do solids for revolution. It has some techniques of doing that and then finally um, finding the volume by some cross sections. So fairly short unit, um, but uh, very much so uh, in involved in our free response questions for our AP exam. So we start out with our area between two different curves. Um, it could be a combination of, of curves from different integrals. But if you have two curves, f and g, um, and they're continuous on an interval, and f is greater than g, you got to know which one's on top. Then you can find the area um, between a and b the a value of that region bound by the graphs by using this integral. Okay, so it's the integration from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx, where f of x is the larger graph, g of x is the smaller graph on the particular interval. Sometimes you have to write numerous intervals, it could be one or two intervals, and, and probably the key in this whole stuff is getting a really good sketch of the region. You're going to see in a minute I've used some drawing programs to give you some examples here. I have the sketch already. Since I have the sketch already, um, it's really easy to visualize. If you have a great sketch, it's not hard at all to do this. Um, after you have the sketch, you want to determine which type of region you're going to uh, integrate. Is it going to be integrated in terms of y, or is it going to be integrated in terms of x? If you can draw kind of vertical slices between the graphs, we're going to integrate in terms of x. If you can draw horizontal slices, we integrate in terms of y. If you look at the equation, sometimes it's going to be like y equals 2x plus 1. Sometimes it's going to be x equals you know, y squared minus 3, for instance. When we do that, I'm going to do some examples of both. When they're, they're solved for x equals, then you want to use y as your variable of integration. Other way, you use x as your variable of integration. That will be clear as you do some more examples. Um, identify your, your upper and lower boundaries, which one is f of x and which one's uh, y of x, excuse me, f of x and g of x. And then find your left, your top end point, and your right, your, or your bottom end point, um, or your points of intersection. Those become our upper limit and our lower limit. Sometimes those are identified for you. And then set up your integral and set up this integral. And in my examples today, I'm going to just set up my integrals. Um, I'm not going to go through the solving process. That involves what we did in our last semester. In this unit, I'm going to let you use your calculator a lot. So if you didn't, if you weren't here on the day we did the calculator, how to integrate on the calculator, uh, make sure you get that, those questions answered in class. All right, so here we go. First example. In my first example, I have two graphs. I have the graph of a line. It's going to be, excuse me, graph of the parabola, which is negative x squared plus 8, and graph of the line of negative 2x plus 3. Okay, and so I've got this region, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the area of this region. And, and find the area of the region. I, obviously, um, obviously, I, I um, have a picture of it. Okay, this, these graphs, the f of x graph, is my top graph. That's the one that's on top on this interval. And the g of x, that's my bottom graph. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find this area. And I try to find this area, kind of outline it for you. So I'm trying to find this area. And unlike in our last unit where we could have a, very, a value of the integral that would be negative, this part that falls below, this part that falls below the x-axis, this is not negative because I'm just trying to find the area that's bound by these graphs. This can never be negative. So we're back to that kind of concept. The one thing I need is I need to know this lower limit of intersection, and I need to know this upper limit of intersection. In this case, I would draw vertical slices between the graphs, so my integral is going to be in terms of x. You can also see that because that's x squared. I don't want to change that x squared. Okay? Um, I, can, I can see on my graph that they intersect at negative 1, and then they intersect over here at 3. But if I didn't know that, I could find those intersections by setting them equal to each other. So I would take negative x squared plus 8 equals negative 2x plus 3. I would take this side over here on the left and move it over to the right, so I got x squared minus 2x. Um, sorry, that's not an 8, is it? My gosh, that's a 6. I copied it down wrong. Sorry about that. That's a 6. So that's a 6, and that's a 6. So x squared minus 2x um, minus 3 
equals 0. Factor it into x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. And you find their x intersections at 3 and x equals negative 1. What that's going to give me are my upper and lower limits for my, my integral. So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 on the left to 3 on the right, the upper and lower boundaries. The top graph is going to be the graph of negative x squared plus 6. The bottom graph is going to be negative 2x minus plus 3. So I'm going to take negative x squared plus 6 minus negative 2x plus 3. And again, like I was saying a minute ago, I'm not going to make you solve this by hand. Obviously, we could be very neat about your distributing the negatives, and then the power rule would apply here. There's no substitution needed. You can do it on your calculator. Um, ultimately, when we get to a quiz or test on this, a lot of times I let you use your calculator, or um, I'll give you a picture of it. Uh, the, like the picture will be given to you. On the AP exam, we'll, you'll look at lots of old AP questions where we give you the picture, and the first step is to find the area between the graphs. Let's look at another example. In my next example, I have a couple of equations in terms of y. Uh, my first equation, this one right here, that inside equation, that's going to be x equals y squared. And this one right here is going to be um, x equals uh, 2y squared minus 4. And let's call this g of x. <coughs> uh, no, I don't want to write it that way. I'm sorry. It would be g of y, just so I can refer to them for you. So g of y equals that, and this one let's refer to as f of y. It'll help you when I'm just communicating. And in, in this case, we want to leave y as my variable of integration. So y is going to be my variable of integration. And when y is your variable of integration, which we have not done much of, you've got to make sure that your upper and lower limits are y values, not x values. Um, also, when you're trying to determine which graph is larger on the interval, um, you're looking at which one is further to the right. So this one, this side, the f of y, is going to be larger than g of y on the interval identified. When we go to integrate this, we're going to use our horizontal slices when we find the area. So we're finding this area in here. okay? And we're going to take the top graph, which is f of y, minus the bottom graph, which is g of y. If you draw some vertical slices on this, if I draw some sorry, I mean horizontal slices, I would draw like a line here. And then I just draw infinite, infinitely many slices. And I just add up the area of these, uh, add up these, these slices. And that ends up being the area that's, that's identified. So in this case, again, if I didn't know which where they intersected, if I didn't have a good picture, and see that they're intersecting in a y value of negative 2 and a y value of positive 2, I could set these equations equal to each other. I'd get negative 2 and positive 2. So the integral goes from negative 2 to positive 2. The larger function on this interval is y squared minus 2y squared minus 4. And since the variable of integration is y, it's dy, not dx. Let me do a couple of more examples. One of the examples I'm going to do for you is going to have uh, numerous different graphs where the, 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 um, you're going to have to write a couple of different integrals. Same concepts. So I have three different graphs. Um, the first one is this, this one right here, which is, is going to be the uh, g of x, which is x cubed. So g of x, which is x cubed. This one right here is f of x which is x plus 6. And this one right here is h of x, which is negative 0.5x. And the reason why this gets different is because um, we're going to, in this, in this particular problem, we're going to integrate in terms of x. But as I draw my vertical lines to see which graph is larger and which graph is smaller, over here, the one that's on top is f of x, and the one that's on bottom is h of x. And that's true um, from negative 1, 2, 3, 4. From negative 4 over to 0. But then right here at 0, what happens is my top graph stays as f of x, 
but now my bottom graph becomes g of x. And g of x is that x cubed graph. So I have to end up writing two integrals. I have to write an integral from negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, from negative 4 over to 0. And then I have to write another integral from 0 up to 2. Again, x values. And there's no other way of doing this problem. This is not like it's any easier doing it in terms of y or anything. So my first integral would go from negative 4 to 0. Top graph is x plus 6. Bottom graph is negative 1 half x dx. And then I have to add to that the area of the region from 0 up to 2. Top graph is x plus 6. Bottom graph is x cubed dx. So again, a, a, a good picture is just worth a thousand words. It really is. Um, you see these great pictures? You're going to see in my next video where I do some pictures and I spin it around and I get these great like three-dimensional pictures. And I'll show you how to do that in class using the Calculates of Pellets program, which is um, on our website. A lot of these pictures I did, a lot of the pictures you're seeing right here, I did on the same website. Our last example, what I want to do is I want to show you a trig one. And sometimes the region, you have to be careful because our book describes a region, or sometimes on the AP exam they'll describe the region. And what ends up happening in, in this particular problem is that um, I'm going to have a couple different graphs. This top graph right here is f of x. And this is going to be 4 plus the cosine of 2x. You do not have to be able to graph that by hand. And this one is 3 sine of 1 half x. And let's say that that's g of x. And notice that those graphs don't intersect. So then what they do is they tell you, OK, well, it's also the region, this region that we're trying to find right here, is bound by x equals 0 and x equals pi. And in this particular case, those become the lower and upper boundaries. And so it's, again, it's important to get a really good sketch. And with the really good sketch, make sure you identify the left and right boundaries, because oftentimes our book will say, um, going from the vertical line at x equals 0 up to the vertical line of x equals pi. These become your boundaries. Top function is f of x. The bottom function is g of x. Here's your integral. 0 up to pi. It's going to be 4 plus cosine of 2x minus 3 sine of 1 half x dx. x is our variable. So that should get you off and running in this unit. That should get you doing some problems on um, finding area. And I'll expand these concepts and show you how to do some of the drawings in class and make sure that you're clear. Obviously, if you have a, 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 a nice drawing, it makes things a lot easier. Good luck. And in the next one, we'll do some rotating around.